Hi, Jean Lurson here. And today I have a special person helping me paint, my granddaughter Eliza. She, she and I often paint together. And with the holidays coming up, we were thinking about things we could do for the holiday season, things you can give as gifts, things you can use in the house as uh, holiday decorations. And it just so happens that Eliza's mother, Meryl, has just started a blog demonstrating handmade projects. And these are some of the things that she has made. They are lovely candle holders. And when I saw them, I thought, well, what a great project that Liza and I could do together using watercolors and watercolor paper and have something that is uh, nice and translucent that the light will shine through and they make lovely table decorations and you can give them to people as gifts. So, you ready, Lizzie? Yeah. Okay, All so right. let's get started. Okay, so what color are we using for this one, Liza? Okay, so we're using Windsor Blue, Red Shade, New Gamboge, and Iridescent Gold. Great, I think those colors, nice holiday colors, go nicely together. First, I'm gonna wet the paper and because it's such a hot day i would suggest that we really wet the paper well so that our colors will run okay and then i'm going to spray my paint as well yes keep them keep them wet and remember that the winds of blue is a is a is a very strong color so you want to start off um yeah putting a little bit in a side dish to Try it out and to see what um, the mm -hmm. value is. And it's a lovely color. And yeah. Um, we're going to let some of the colors run together, and where the blue meets the yellow, we might end up getting a little bit of green. And the new gamboge. A new gamboge does tend to dry a lot lighter, so. You can you can use it as bright as you want, really. Um, and you probably with the, with a project like this, you probably want to have an equal amount of the two colors. Um, otherwise, one's going to dominate the other. Um, I guess we always have to bear in mind that the outside corners are going to be cut off. So yeah. the pattern that we want is sort of just inside the corners. Just turn it in all sort of directions. Oh, I like the way that that's um, some of the white of the paper is showing through where the paper has started to dry and it's giving interesting patterns. It almost looks like a landscape there. So again, just to remember, you want a middle value uh, with your colors, not too light and not too dark, to keep the paper translucent for the light to shine through. Yeah. Do you think that the two colors are fine by themselves or we add, do you need to add a third color, maybe a, a second yellow or something? What do you think? Yeah, I like that idea. I've got a quinacrid and gold here. That, I like that. That's nice. Yeah. What do you think? Okay, I think it's time to add the gold. Well, that's nice. Actually, I didn't think the gold was going to work with the yellow. Yeah, and then when it dries, it'll be a lot darker. It looks really yes. light. Yes, when the light shines through, you'll see the iridescence. So. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's a very pretty blue. I really like it in an abstract painting like this. Yeah, that's nice. Nice. See how it flares out. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, 
You think that's enough? I think that is enough now. Okay. And maybe we'll do two more and then hand it over to Meryl and I'll have a link to her blog under the video. And you'll see how she makes these lovely origami candle holders. I'm using Windsor Red Permanent Sap Green Green Gold and Iridescent Gold. There'll be links to these colors under the videos. Did you think about the design beforehand? You know, it's just pretty random. When try the green gold into the sap green because you'll see how it disperses it. You get interesting variation in color. I like the paper is drying. So with the with the big um, areas of red here, when I know when Meryl makes these candle holders, um, she cuts off the corners. So we're not going to see a lot of this red here. And the middle section is actually the bottom of the candle holder. So that's something to keep in mind too. I like that. You think it's time to add the gold? Um, in one second. Okay. My granddaughter's learned to be a perfectionist. Oh, it gives nice effects. It really makes the colors pop out. And it's going to look lovely when the candle is shining through the paper. I love the, the lighter green and the darker green. I think they go beautifully together. And maybe some gold in the darker green because the gold won't show up as much in the lighter green. Yes, so you see that more. Yeah, I'm just going to make it more concentrated. Seems like enough. You think you've got enough? Yeah. Okay. Let's put this one aside to dry and we'll make another one. Okay. Okay, so our third project. And what color are you using this time? I am using Windsor Red again. Aussie Red Gold. Iridescent Gold. And you obviously um, really like Windsor Red. So I tried offering you some other reds, but you seem to <laughs> like that red. That's like a holiday color. That's a good reason. Oh, so the yellow that we used is Azo yellow. Daniel Smith Azo yellow. Actually, I'm going to do the other one first. The Aussie red gold? Yeah. A lovely color, a fairly new color for, by Daniel Smith. I think I'm gonna add some more red so it kind of like yeah. And, and the nice thing about adding red to you, to a yellower color, you're just gonna get like an orangey color, which um, is nice. You're introducing a third color without using too many paints. Yeah. Flick some in as well. And maybe you want to flick a little bit into the red. That's nice. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah. See, it creates interesting textures, and textures is what you want because when the light shines through, you're gonna see all these textures. It's, if you let it get a little drier before you do the flicking, um, you find that it won't disperse as much. It'll, it'll sit on top and then you get these interesting patterns. I want the red to run more. Yes. I agree. It's... So you're starting to get nice soft edges there. Yeah. I kind of want it to be darker right here. Do I think that there's enough? Maybe like over here, it's really white. Um, Maybe a little bit more, more red or... Put some red next to that and yeah. let them run into each other. My thoughts exactly. Good. You decided that you wanted to do uh, sea salt into this one. Yeah. Um, just remember, you, one can overdo the sea salt thing, so you have to uh, be careful because when you put the salt into the paint, what it does is it soaks up the paint and spreads out. So you want to just be a little cautious when you when you put that on. We're doing gold as well, though. Well, let's put the sea salt on first and see if we need to do the gold. So we're using natural sea salt in very coarse grain. 
hold your hand off. And uh, you can see here that it's actually quite big grains. And because of that, we don't want to put too much because it will really soak up the paint. Yeah. So you want to be careful and where you, how, how much of it you use, basically. Okay. It's got to be in the wet areas and you just want a few. That looks good. That's about, I would say, right. And you want to carry it through. Maybe it is zigzaggy pattern to the other corner there. Great. So we've got to let that dry. And I'm excited to see how they turn out as candle holders. So we don't want to add gold to this one? Oh, I mean, it's up to you. It's your painting. I think it's fine. It doesn't need gold. Remember, when it's dry and we take the salt off, if you don't like the effect, we can add gold after that by wetting it again. True. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, we'll let this dry then. So here we are with the final product. Are you happy with these? Yeah, they look good. I think they look super. Look how the gold shows up more when it's dry. And this one, where Eliza used the salt, I think this is going to look super when Meryl turns it into a lovely origami candle holder. Don't you think? Yeah. So one of the things that we forgot to mention, important things that we forgot to mention at the very beginning, was what paper we used, the size of the paper, and so on, because that's very important for the translucency of the end product. The size of the paper is 10 inches by 11 inches, and it's 90 pound, which is very thin watercolor paper. Not the weight that I usually work on, but it's necessary for this project because a lot of folds are made on the paper and that has to work well and it has to have the translucency of the candle shining through. There'll be links below the video to all the materials we used and if you want to learn how to make these lovely origami candle holders, look for the link below the video to Meryl's blog, otherwiseamazing.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.